very good afternoon my dear students friends today once again i have come up with the same topic of vipassana science and technology i hope this uh, talk will be slightly better than the previous one let's start as i have said i am an engineer manager leader and educator with 35 years of experience in various fields i have been trying to tell about usefulness of vipassana to students at many occasions for the last 21 years it seems i am still not able to connect with the students at desired level of excellence so my option is try try and try try hard so this is another try at that what is uh, vipassana and why science and vipassana combine together this question comes to mind modern science and technology have done incredible things which was never thought of it has given us a lot of wealth lot of prosperity but along with that it has given us a lot of stress health problems unhappiness wealth and prosperity is required but peace of mind happiness and health is also equally required by human being vipassana provides peace frees mind of stress which produces health as by product vipassana is a way to purify mind to pristine purity it was rediscovered by tathagata gautama the buddha 2600 years ago vipassana is an old meditation technique of india which gets lost after few hundred years of its discovery by a buddha before gautama buddha there were buddhas they also discovered the same thing and distributed with compassionate mind but again they were lost in this age gautama the buddha again reached discovered it for the benefit of mankind benefit of all of us and india saw unprecedented development in all fields it was very rich and also very peaceful for more than a million years but after that it was again gradually lost because the vidya is a is to be maintained in pristine purity then only it works gautama the buddha after enlightenment thought for about 2 weeks and thought of giving his new discovery of dhamma 
a way to clean mind to his most without of gratitude to his teachers but his teachers were not there they already left for heavenly abode and then the, he thought of his five companion who accompanied him while he left home at at from his palace at kapilavastu the sons of five ministers of his father they were wandering in saranath buddha could saw it with his bodhi netra and he came to saranath and met this four five accompanions and he gave first sermons to this five accompanions they are famously called pancha bhagyo bhikkhu and gradually they became enlightened and this process is famously known as dhamma chakka pavattan sutta he then proceeded further he taught many ascetics who were on the path to search for truth he gave them his new form way dhamma vipassana and they all became enlightened gradually and after that he told his students disciples with compassion distribute this way of life to all deserving people and they went forth and he himself went forth teaching dhamma teaching vipassana all around north india and disciple also went to south india and many persons in his lifetime became enlightened many became very close to enlightenment and many became very very gentle very near to nibbana moksha and gradually the surrounding area started becoming peaceful after few after 100 years or so also carried he was a very angry man and he used to be called chanda asuka after the kalinga war he took the practical teaching of buddha and he became very close to him like he spread with compassion dhamma all around his empire then with the request from outside world he sent many emissaries throughout the world to teach dhamma and dhamma reach neighboring countries and gradually reach throughout the world but again after few hundred years 
Vipassana was losing its purity of teaching. And with losing the purity of teaching, it was losing its efficacy. And people are not getting benefited. So people started not to practice Vipassana and the practical knowledge was lost. Then the theoretical portion of Buddha's teaching, Pipitaka, was lost from this country. But neighboring countries and especially Myanmar kept the theoretical teaching as well as practical teaching of Vipassana align in Guru Shishya Parampara, teacher disciple parampara, and in our age, a arahat, a fully enlightened person, Lady Saido, famous Lady Saido, he started teaching the lay people the householders and encouraging them to be teachers. One of his former student became a teacher from whom a young man, Uba Kin, a government employee, he learned the Vidya and practiced, practiced hard. And Later, Lady Swadu made him a teacher. He told him to teach. And Sahaja Uvakin, as he was a learned man in English, he used to take all people in his courts, especially Western people. And our Guruji, Satyanarayan Jikwenka, who was who has settled in Myanmar for the past three generations, learned Vipassana from Swayi Ubakin. He practiced under him for 14 years, learned it thoroughly. He wanted to come to teach Vipassana, his ailing mother in India. So Sahaja Uvakim made him a teacher. You see, teach your father and mother. Also teach people of India. Because I am unable to go, you are going. So we are very fortunate to learn this Vidya of Vipassana from Goenkaji, our Guruji. Goenkaji Goen first taught his parents. Few people knew him, but courses went on. And a lot of people started learning Vipassana because it was the time for Vipassana, regeneration of Vipassana. As foretold by many sages, that second spell of Buddha's teaching will be starting to come to India after 1956. An able son of India, the writer of the Constitution of India, Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar, taught his people Raise the slogan of Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha in India and gave vow to 10 lakh people to adhere to Buddha's teaching. And Goenkaji started teaching the Vipassana in 1969 and Vipassana's Jayatra 
started in India in 1969. I learned Vipassana in the year 19, 2001, 5 to 15 July 2001 at Dhammagiri, Egatpuri, Maharashtra, my first 10 day course. And I found the course was so useful. I was very stressful person and I became very relieved of stress. I could see my mind and what really causing the stress. So what really is taught in a 10 day course that question comes to mind. In a 10 day course, Sheila, Samma Samadhi and Pragya is taught. What is Sheila? Sheila is backbone of morality of any religion. All the religion has morality as base. Because morality is the foundation of society. Our constitution have all moralities embedded in it. Morality in nation is not to harm others and not to harm self. The basic five moralities are not to kill, not to steal, not to do any sexual misconduct, not to lie, not to hurt anyone with words, and not to take any intoxicant, any form of intoxicant. These are the five basic moralities of any religion. This is taught in a 10-day course. Students observe this meticulously. After that is truthful meditation, Samma Samadhi. What is that? Samma Samadhi is awareness of awareness of breath as it is. Before starting a 10 day course, valuables from the students are taken, his mobile is also taken and kept in a safe place. Students only cannot even write or, and read, so everything write and read is taken out. For 10 days they had to meditate and listen to the discourse. Another thing is that they cannot talk also. They cannot talk amongst themselves, students, even by physical gestures. They can only talk to the teacher about the technique of vipassana and about the arrangement of staying to the Dhamma Sevas. So, their days start at 4.30. Before that, they have to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Wash themselves and come for meditation at 30. What is the meditation? Object of meditation is breathe for three and a half days. Watch the breathe here, nostril and upper lip, this triangular area. Keep the mind there and try to know the breathe, awareness of breathe. 
incoming breath, outgoing breath. This student practiced for three and a half days from 4.30 to 6.30, two hours meditation in Dhamma Hall or in sales or in their own room as per the instruction of teacher. Then again, they can take breakfast up to 7 o'clock, 6.30 to 7. Simple breakfast is given and vegetarian breakfast. And after that, they have to come back to room, take a rest or wash or take bath or whatever they want to do. And at 8, they have to come to Dhammahal again, start meditation for one hour, then take a break for five minutes, again come back to hall and meditate for one hour, again take a break, go and again come back to Dhammahal after five minutes and meditate up to 11 o'clock. And after that, 11 to 11.30, take their lunch, simple vegetarian lunch in the kitchen, kitchen area. And after that, they can take a little rest. If they want to talk to the teacher, teacher is available at the mall at 12 o'clock. 12 to 12 30. After that again they can come back up to 1 30 take rest and come back to meditation hall, Namma Hall and meditate for one hour. Again take a break for five minutes and come back again. This way they have to meditate up to five o'clock as per instruction of conducting teacher. After five, two students can go and take a little snacks, tea, milk in the kitchen area and take rest up to six and from six to seven. Again meditation and seven ten to eight forty. There will be discourse about the day one. What are the difficulties found by the students? It will be deliberated by Guruji S. N. Goenka through video. It's very well made video. Student will find answer to the difficulties and how to meditate from these videos. Then again for 15 minutes meditation and 9 30 9 to 9 30 teacher is available to take question from the students students can ask question to the teacher this way in anapan meditation breathe meditation three and a half days are spent by the students this is the normal routine after three and a half days in the afternoon, when mind is cool, mind is sharpened, balanced, truthful, with this mind, students are asked to see the sensation from the top of the head and throughout the face, head, neck, hands body, the fingers of the hands, the body, front body, back body, the legs up to the fingers. Students are asked to see the sensations all throughout the body, part by part. 
This is Vipassana. We, students will find this. Sensations are impermanent in nature. It is rising and going away. Rising and going away. Upadjati nirajjanti. Upadjati nirajjanti. This knowledge, direct experiential knowledge, will give the wisdom that this body is not mine and this mind is also not mine. These are all impermanent in nature. So there is no point in keeping old anger and old greed which is embedded in the mind. And they go away including the ego, they start dissolving layer by layer, layer by layer. This is how Vipassana helps in eradicating anger, greed, ego from the mind. And the moment a little mind is clean, purified, student starts feeling peace, happiness. So this continues up to ninth day. On tenth day, another meditation technique is taught. It is called Mangal Maitri distribution of merits to all beings. Practicing this, students become more happy because he becomes selfless. He is trying to distribute his merits to all beings. So, he is generating love which is more soothing. People become happy. Students become happy. At 11, Mangal Maitri is over and noble silence is also over. Students can talk to other students in their residential area, office area, kitchen area, but not in Dhammahal. Dhammahal, again, noble silence. A nearby area of Dhammahal is called Santipathar, Noble Silence. Now students are prepared to go home. Gradually they are becoming outward. But three meditation that is at 2.30 to 3.30 is compulsory. And 6 to 7 is compulsory and also the discourse, 7, 10 to 8, 14. So, this is almost over. Again, students wake up at same 4.30. From five, they will listen to Guruji's 11th day discourse that is called Dikshant Prabhajan, which is a must. How to meditate further? So at 6.30, all the formalities are over and students can take breakfast up to 8 o'clock and they can go back to their home. This is all about 10 days meditation.
one can know more about Vipassana by listening to Guruji's daily discourses which are available in YouTube. You can write 10 days Vipassana meditation by SM Goenka in YouTube, you'll find it. Also, student can access an app called Vipassana in which is resources are available. Now modern science. I talked about little in the beginning. Modern science, I'll talk my elective subject in engineering was nuclear physics. I know a little about nuclear physics and I have studied nuclear physics in detail and other sciences in detail later. Modern science investigate the universe with instruments is view is external always with instruments. Observation is external external objects. Science has discovered the atoms, subatomic particles, also beyond that, with large hardened colliders and similar instrument. With famous equation of Einstein, E is equal to S M C square, shows that material and energy are two sides of a coin. In course, it is material and in subtler, it is energy. Material is made with energy, with vibrations. That has been discovered, theorized in string theory, string field theory, M theory of most modern latest theories. There is a similarity of this discovery. This matter is made with energy, vibrations, Buddha says the same thing. He says after enlightenment. Sabba loka prakampito bajjalita meaning that all material world is made with vibrations. Energy. It is Bani. It's true. The matter, even the empty space is filled with energy. energy fields. That has been discovered by the science. With this Discoveries, similarity in discoveries by modern science and Vipassana. But effect is different. One is external knowledge, another is internal knowledge. 
internal experiential knowledge another is external experiential knowledge this gives different results when we observe our sensation with our mind our body sensations with our mind our mind as it is truthfully truth deletes all the anger inside us greed inside us ego inside us we become better human being better and better with more practice more deleting of anger because anger is or greed ego we have accumulated huge in number more we delete more we become better person we become more concerned about people we send them good wishes we have love in our eyes for other human beings other beings we protect the nature but with science things is different we go on observing external things even the molecules atoms subatomic particles we see it externally with instruments not with our feeling but with our mind with our intellect we analyze we have more knowledge we have more technology great more technology for our convenience we create more prosperity with science but in the process we accumulate stress lots of stress because our want is limitless so what is the way forward we have to create a balance between these two knowledge external knowledge and internal knowledge internal experiential knowledge we need prosperity we need science and technology because it helps us live better life but we need we need peace 
restless mind help so students you can give us gift of 10 days time to experience our experiential knowledge vipassana at our centers you have to give your 10 days value of your time but you will gain a lot this teaching are given free of cost by donation of old students because old students became happy so they want to ha- distribute happiness by giving this teaching free to new students but again some of the students may not be able to take a 10 day course what they will do they can start with anapana in their home for 10 to 15 minutes in the morning 10 to 15 minutes in the evening how to do anapan sit straight especially when you are in home you should sit cross legged on a cushion sit straight in sukhasan in your school college you can sit on a chair remove your specs if you have and close your eyes watch your breath at nostril at this point triangle upper lip and nostril try to be aware of breath incoming breath and outgoing breath. it will create some sensation at this triangular point triangular area but your mind is not trained it is trained in thoughts every time this wanders about thoughts past thought or future thoughts but gently bring the mind back to the area triangular area between the nostril and the upper lip observe with mind will wander away again bring back gently don't add any mantra any pranayam or any imagination these will not make it a universal truth this will take you to other things not truth they have their own benefits but with this meditation truth is the main criteria universal truth which can be practiced by all human being irrespective of caste creed sect color religion universal truth of breath as it is it may be short it may be long it may come to through right nostril or left nostril just observe 
just be aware. Again, mind may wander away, be alert. Bring back mind gently to breathe. In this way, mind will start listening to you and you will become gradually master of your mind. Practice 10 to 15 minutes. After practice, you will feel a bit peaceful. That means you have acquired some merit. Mind has become a little clean. So distribute the merit. Say, may I be happy. May my parents be happy, my teachers be happy, my friends be happy, all may be happy for two minutes. You can find Guruji, Satanar and Goinkaji's Anapan meditation, mini Anapan meditation in YouTube. And with Guruji, you can practice the 10 minutes and then 2 minutes. Mangal Maitri. This way, your mind will become peaceful every day, little by little. And you'll be prepared for 10 days course better. And this peace of mind will give you the confidence to go for a 10 day course. One more thing will happen to the students is that they will be less afraid, less afraid of stage, less afraid of exams, less afraid to meet teachers or other dignitaries. Their mind will become more balanced, clean, sharp, concentrated, so they can easily do better studies. They will have more time to play. So these are the benefits. Another point. We say this meditation, Anapan meditation, a compass. Compass is an instrument which gives direction to the captain of a ship in an ocean. We are also a ship ourselves, each one of us in the vast ocean of samsara, much bigger than the ocean. So we need a direction. We all are captains. This Manapana meditation will act as compass because mind will become cool, balanced, truthful. Decision will be correct. So we'll be able to steer our life with safety. So, my dear friends, I hope I have today, because I have prepared myself more, could talk more clearly about Vipassana, about science, about technology, more clearly. But there will be questions, lots of questions in your mind. 
So don't hesitate to put your comments, your questions to me so that I can answer. Because in this small session, all aspect of technology cannot be discussed. All aspect of science cannot be discussed. All aspect of Vipassana cannot be discussed. Only salient points are discussed here. So I expect questions from you. Please ask questions. And I also will become benefited because through this question, I will be able to see your point of view and any knowledge is better by prakara and apashyati, seeing from different angles. So I request students to put a question. Please do. Also, see the description. I am putting some sites for your benefit in that. So please see them. And today, I close the session here with a prayer. May all beings be happy. Sabka Mangal Ho. Shabar Mangal Ho. Bhavatu Sabka Mangal